Okay. Um, I've been asked to say a little bit about the uh, economic and uh, political impacts of uh, the tsunami and, uh, and, and earthquake. And as you've seen quite a few of the pictures, you can imagine that uh, both the economic and the political impacts are pretty significant. Um, on the economic side, I guess I sort of think of it in two stages, both the immediate impact and the, the longer term impact. Um, the immediate impact is the latest estimates of the damage is around $300 billion, um, which uh, I was noting to myself is about the same as the bank bailouts in the United States. Um, uh, the other thing about that $300 billion is I don't think that it's, it's a, a set in stone figure. There's a lot of areas they haven't been able to really get into yet, uh, so they haven't really been able to completely assess the extent of the, extent of the damage. Um, other shorter-term shorter impacts include the fact that um, uh, many factories um, have had to suspend production either due to damage or um, because of a lack of uh, power or shortage of parts. Um, I heard that Toyota closed uh, all, or suspended production in all 12 of its, uh, of its car plants. Um, one thing I should have mentioned earlier, though, sorry, I forgot about, is that from what I understand, most of the damage was actually caused, caused by the tsunami and not by the earthquake. That, in fact, the preparation, they have well prepared a lot of the buildings, um, and so while there was some damage, the really devastating damage has been primarily caused by the earthquake, uh, by the tsunami, which I think is a really important point to indicate that there was an awful lot of preparation, uh, earthquake preparedness that was, in, uh, that was in place. Okay, so the damage, uh, many factories uh, for at least a, a significant period of time are having to suspend production. Um, replacement of lost energy, 20% of um, uh, Japan's nuclear capacity was, uh, was affected. Uh, rolling blackouts, so still uh, today in, to in uh, Tokyo there's a, there are uh, uh, rolling blackouts. Um, the whole issue of radiation and food from the reactors, and again that's one that at the moment is a short term impact but we have no idea um, um, how bad it's going to be or how long. So having found radiation, uh, higher, high levels of radiation in water and spinach and um, in milk and a, and a variety of other sort of vegetables. Um, clearly impact on, uh, immediate impact on, on tourism, uh, people not, including me, uh, not going when they were planning to go. Um, um, you know, ironically, I think it's just on the slide, yeah. um, sorry, any, a rapid increase in the, uh, in the value of the yen. Surprisingly, uh, despite the fact that all the, the damage occurred in, in Japan, um, investors go to safe currencies in the midst of crises and the yen was still seen as a safe, uh, safe currency. And so huge, you see that big spike there towards the, uh, the yen, that's a huge jump in the value of the yen that occurred after the, uh, uh, after the, uh, the 11th. Um, quite quickly, the central banks kind of intervened with Japan's uh, help to bring down the value of the yen, feeling that Japan's beleaguered exporters were going to need sort of all the help they could get. But as one commentator pointed out, at the same time, they're going to have to rebuild all of the northeast part of Japan, which is going to require resources and commodities and things for which um, a strong currency would actually be helpful. So uh, they're going to have to really try to balance uh, sort of both, both sides of that. Um, other longer term, um, uh, longer term impact issues. The estimates at the moment are that it'll take about five years to, uh, five years to rebuild Japan. The list of things that, are, that they know of that have been damaged include 17, 17 bridges, um, you know, a, a large number of sewage plants, um, damaged dams, lots of landslides. You've seen all the, the um, inf other infrastructure and uh, highway damage. Um, so uh, obviously a huge, a huge amount of uh, rebuilding. Um, and part of the tricky part of that is Japan, uh, well, obviously it has, it, uh, it will have to spend government money to do that, and it already has a very significant uh, government debt, the highest uh, government debt in the, in the G20. Now, the, the positive side of that is most of that debt is domestically held, so that's a, that's a positive thing. It's not borrowed, uh, well, it's borrowed, but it's borrowed domestically. But nonetheless, uh, the public debt was already an enormous problem for Japan before this, uh, and so it's an even bigger one, uh, it's an even bigger one now. Um, and they're going to have to, over the long term, replace the, uh, the, the, the energy that they, uh, that they have lost. Um, another interesting sort of longer term impact that I was just reading about is that, particularly Tokyo North, but um, Japan generally, people have been practicing uh, what they call self-restraint. They're basically in solidarity with um, the victims of the earthquake and the damage northeast. Um, they've basically been um, not only turning off every kind of electrical thing that you can sort of think of. And so that's in fact meant that Tokyo hasn't had as many of the, the black belts as they predicted because people have cut back on their energy use so significantly. Um, but the other thing is basically they've canceled special events, uh, graduations, celebrations, 
um, going out for karaoke or um, to um, Japan's infamous entertainment districts. Basically, all of that is pretty much shut down, in, in, particularly in Tokyo, in solidarity with, uh, with people. With the, with the victims. Um, and it's not clear whether that's a short-term thing or a long-term thing. There's a sense that this kind of sense of self-restraint uh, may continue for a while. And of course, that also has um, a fairly large uh, economic uh, impact. And so people in the, the, the foreign, the, the further away areas are trying to say, to say to the people in Tokyo and the rest of it, like, don't, you know, there are economic implications. We need to, a bit like in, in New York after 9-11, you need to keep spending as your patriotic duty. But most Japanese feel they need to do the opposite. And, and that's basically what's, uh, what's happening at the moment. Um, uh, political, uh, political impact. Um, there's been criticism uh, that the government didn't respond quickly enough um, and that it didn't communicate as well as it should have, particularly related to the, the, uh, nuclear, uh, the nuclear situation. Um, improved, um, but again, uh, some some, some negative feelings in that regard, particularly among people in the, in the areas. Um, big variations, as you might have noticed, in the foreign press and the Japanese press in terms of their concerns uh, over, uh, over, the radiation, uh, over the radiation issue. Um, I heard the Japanese, uh, ambassador on the Japanese ambassador to Canada on the radio recently, and his sort of point of view was, um, you know, basically panic and sensationalism aren't going to do us any good. And uh, you know we're the ones who are in this situation, so we have to uh, we have to keep our cool. It's we that are facing the challenges. Um, it's we who have to face the situation. So foreigners might be able to leave, but we can't leave. So there's no point in us panicking. Um, and he, he delivered it in, in in quite a sort of moving uh, moving way. There's actually been quite a bit of anger at foreign reporting, feeling that uh, the foreign reporters have exaggerated things. So there's um, a, I, I read that there some array residents have created a, a journalist wall of shame. In which they basically put all of the uh, listed all the articles in which journalists mis uh, misrepresented the situation or had their facts wrong, and they put it all sort of up in, in uh, one one place. Other people, uh, other sort of regular Japanese interview when they've been asked, you know, well, why why aren't you more upset? Why aren't you, uh, you know, why are you not angry at the government or why aren't you, um, I don't know, protesting or whatever? Have sort of said, well, if we don't trust our government, who should we trust? And so basically a sense of, you know, we're the ones in this situation, and so um, we have to all pull together. And that's part of what this self-restraint kind of movement is, is also about. On the um, general um, political side, the Prime Minister, um, Naoto Kan, has not been that visible, um, and he has been the, the, um, the focus of a, a fair amount of criticism. But his chief cabinet secretary, um, Yukio Edano, has actually emerged as a bit of a hero. Um, one of the things I read called him the Jack Bauer of, um, oh, sorry. When you change, do I have this picture there? Sorry, thanks. <laughs> My uh, PowerPoint died here. Um, so um, uh, the Prime Minister has not uh, received as much, uh, has received quite a bit of criticism, but um, Yuko Edano, the Cabinet Secretary, has been seen as, as I say, the, uh, like Jack Bauer of 24, um, particularly because um, he's been quite famous for not having slept through the first few days of the crisis. So supposedly he was up for about 105 hours without sleeping, and people were tweeting him, you know, please go to sleep, we need you, you know, this kind of thing. <laughs> um, there are actually some interesting stories about these little these little tweet things that people have been doing. So on his, it's been, you know, basically, Donald Trump, please sleep. For the self-defense forces, who also have been seen as being very heroic in terms of, you've seen the pictures of them carrying out people and that kind of thing, they've been getting messages just to say, you know, please eat, like take care of yourself. But um, the Prime Minister has been being like, please get out. <laughs> and um, the Tokyo, you might have heard that the Tokyo, uh, Ishihara, the, the governor of Tokyo, was uh, quoted early on as saying something like that the whole earthquake um, and tsunami was kind of divine retribution for, I don't know, people not living right, or I don't know exactly sure what the context was. But people, of course, as you can imagine, jumped on that very quickly. So the tweet to him was, you know, shut up, basically. So um, it's, uh, there, have been, there have been sort of political, uh, political reactions. Um, so um, I guess my concluding thoughts are to think about sort of Japan in the future, uh, in a sense, by looking at the past, is that Japan has pr proved itself a pretty resilient country many, many times. Um, and. Uh, I think that we will see that uh, we will see that again right now. I think the the self restraint movement is a bit again that sense of we're going to all pull together. And when I hear from my friends in Japan, that's basically what they're right. Japan is strong. You know, we'll we will we'll sort of fight. We'll kind of we'll kind of hang in there. But there's nonetheless uh, even to people who aren't in um, who aren't in 
in the affected area or not in Tokyo, um, even, even Japanese over here, there is still a real sense of, of um, almost being shell-shocked and certainly being um, overwhelmed by the enormity of all of it and I think the enormity of the challenge that will rely, lie before Japan. But nonetheless, as um, I think that we have on this quote here, while it might take Japan some time to rebuild, um, I agree with uh, Warren Buffett, although maybe perhaps not from the, I'm, I'm not about to be willing to buy stocks, unfortunately, but, um, uh, but from the point of view of uh, Japan being a country of resilience, a country of great strength, and as you can see, even the fact that, that people pull together in that way, that you didn't see, you saw very little in the way of looting, you saw very little in the way of, um, of, of people sort of out to, uh, to just look out, of, out for themselves. And every story that you read from the Northeast talks about how people were putting others before themselves and remaining stoic in front of, you know, incredibly devastating loss. So um, I, see, uh, I, I see that Japan will emerge out of this, um, you know, perhaps, uh, perhaps even stronger.